What's up guys, in today's video we're going to be talking about some recovery stocks as we start to see the movement of investor money in the stock market. Over the course of the past 12 months we've seen stay at home stocks like Zoom, Netflix, Etsy, Peloton amongst many others absolutely skyrocket but with mass vaccine rollout and Boris's four step plan to bring us back to recovery could we start to see some rotation into some of those recovery stocks that have obviously suffered also badly over the course of the past 12 months. Well that's exactly what we're going to be diving into during today's video video. We'll talk about the current state of affairs in the stock market which isn't all too great along with talking about some specific stocks which I personally believe will potentially boom over the course of the coming months ahead. But before I do so guys my name is Mitch. I post all kinds of videos on investing and the stock market. If you do enjoy content like that hit that big red subscribe button down below as well. Drop a like on the video guys really really helps out the channel and with that being said let's dive straight into it. So first up at the top of the video what I did want to say is that different countries will certainly be at different phases of recovery over the course of the next 12 to 18 to 24 months and whilst I'm going to largely refer to the UK economy and Boris's four-step plan I'm also going to kind of make some general assumptions that other countries like the United States as well as across Europe as well will generally recover at a similar kind of pace to us in the UK. So with that said, what actually is going on in the stock market? Because all I seem to be seeing across my investment portfolio is red days after red days. And whilst I do certainly acknowledge that I've massively benefited from a tech driven recovery since March 2020, I've also kind of come to the conclusion that I kind of have a few lessons to learn from as well. That lesson being that I've come to the realization that my investment portfolio is certainly not diversified enough due to the sector rotation in which we're seeing and will potentially continue to see as global economies continue to recover. So let's talk about economic cycles in a little bit more detail and where investors are actually putting their money and then we'll dive into the specific stocks in which I'm going to be interested in. So let's talk very quickly about economic cycles and where investors are potentially going to be putting their money. So first up, the economy goes through phases of boom and bust, whereby at different points in time, different sectors and different industries will fundamentally become more attractive and less attractive to investors. Now, as of right now, with the UK economy still largely in the sh with GDP down 9.9% for full year 2020, which is actually the largest one year fall in economic GDP that the UK have ever experienced. Now, whilst all of this was kind of self-manufactured, whereby we've obviously had to close down businesses, rather than a fundamental demand problem within the economy, due to this, it has and potentially will continue to have an adverse effect on the future prosperity of UK companies and therefore their stock prices too. But with the UK economy forecasted to recover to kind of pre-pandemic highs by by Q3 2022, we could be very much in line for a very sharp and very quick recovery over the course of the next 18 to 24 months. But not only this, but you'd also suspect Europe as well as the United States as well will potentially see very similar kind of recovery rates. So when I think about recovery stocks, there are two key economic sectors in which I'm largely thinking about. The first one being consumer discretionary. With employment levels rising once again and more people actually returning to work, less people relying on the furlough scheme, and consumer confidence growing, businesses and individuals will certainly start to spend more money. This means due to all the additional spending, we could see housing, retail, hospitality and the automobile industry absolutely booming. The second key sector is the transportation sector. Naturally driven by the fact that we've all been stuck at home over the course of the past 12 months. I don't know about you guys, but if you're anything like me, I'm itching to get on the first plane out of here to get some sun as well as a little bit of a break from work. And if most people are thinking the same as I am, well, you could probably expect the airline stocks, cruise lines, hotel chains, entertainment companies and holiday booking companies will certainly benefit over the course of the next few months. And with Boris's plan to allow us to all run wild by the 21st of June, let's talk about the specific stocks within these sectors in which I've just mentioned. So first up in the consumer cyclical space, a big shout out to Harry who commented on my previous video who asked me to take a look at some specific UK stocks. One of those stocks in which he suggested was the Revolution Bars Group. With the ticker symbol RBG, it's a company which if you're based over here in the UK you've probably heard of if not potentially even spent an evening there having a few drinks with your mates and with Boris's plan to actually reopen hospitality by the 12th of April I think it's inevitable that we will see a boom in the hospitality space because let's be honest guys most people out there are absolutely gagging for a pint down the pub so we have good prospects for a potential boom and with Yahoo Finance analysts 
setting targets at £1.80 per share, which is a 465% increase based on the current market price. Could this be a stock which is very much a home run? Well, I certainly think there is scope for a short, sharp and fast recovery of this stock. And I personally do expect that we will see an increase in their stock price. But if I were looking to invest into this stock, there are two key areas of concern that are probably worthwhile calling out. The first one being Revolution stock price was actually down 95% from the market highs in 2017 to the absolute market lows of 2020 and was actually down over 60% before the pandemic had even started. So that is certainly something to think about. In correlation to a declining stock price, the company also struggling financially as well. Despite growing revenues pre-2020, earnings actually dipped into the negative, which certainly isn't great for the company's long-term prospects. So in terms of a very short-term play, potentially for the next 12 to 18 months, I certainly foresee that we could see some stock price growth. However, if I were going to look at this from a five to 10 year time horizon point of view, it would certainly be a stock that I potentially would avoid. The next stock in which I want to talk about in this sector is the Walt Disney Company. Now, whilst it feels like a bit of a bizarre transition to talk about revolution to Walt Disney, this is what we're going to roll with. Now, Disney, you might be quite surprised to hear me say that it's actually a recovery stock, especially as their digital streaming services completely transformed their overall business model. But nonetheless, with theme park revenues down 70% domestically and 60% internationally, there is still a large part of Disney's overall revenue model that is still yet to recover. And when you supplement that with an absolutely booming streaming business with Disney Plus now having 94.9 million subscribers and is forecasted to grow to between 230 and 260 million subscribers by 2024, which means Disney is certainly forecasted to make a hell of a lot of money over the course of the coming years ahead. Now, Disney have reported that the average value of a Disney Plus subscriber is worth $4.03 to the company. And that's on a per month basis. So if my calculations are correct, with an additional circa 150 million subscribers to be on the platform, paying an average of $4.03 per month, that's an additional $7.25 billion in top line revenue that Disney will generate just from Disney Plus alone. Now, bearing in mind that Disney's full year revenue was only $65.3 billion, that's probably about an 11 or a 12% revenue growth rate just from Disney Plus, let alone when all of their theme parks start to reopen once again. So in case you can't tell already, I'm massively bullish on Disney as a company. And to be honest, guys, one of the biggest regrets I have over the course of the past 12 months in the stock market is not investing into Disney when they were $115 per share this time last year. But not only that, Yahoo Finance are also bullish on the company with price targets of $206 per share, which is roughly another 9% uplift based on current market prices. So now let's move into the next sector, which is transportation. The first company which I want to call out is the Airbus Group ticker symbol AIR, which is a company which is listed on the Paris Stock Exchange. Now, Airbus is a pioneer in the aerospace sector where they design, manufacture, and deliver industry-leading commercial aircrafts, helicopters, military transport, satellites, and launch vehicles, as well as providing data services, navigation, secure communications, urban mobility, and other solutions for customers on a global scale. Now, Airbus stock has been on a decade-long upward trend before the pandemic hit. Since the stock closed in 2020, the stock has actually managed to recover 104%, but it's still about 39% away from its previous highs of 139 euros. Now, one of the things in which I like about Airbus from a investment point of view is the fact that they work on an order book which has long time scales, which certainly provides an element of resilience for the company's financials. And due to the fact it's not solely reliant on airline companies looking to purchase new aircrafts and has a slightly more diverse revenue model with the different aviation machines in which it makes, this makes the company itself a little bit more resilient on the whole. And this has kind of been shown when you look at the company's order books in comparison to 2019, whereby the number of units ordered were only down about 4.6%, with the total value of those orders only being down 5.1%. Now, considering some airline stocks out there have declining revenues well above 70% year on year, I think it just goes to show just how much more resilient Airbus's stock is as a potential investment opportunity. To coincide with that, Yahoo Finance analysts are also bullish on the stock with price forecasts of €120 Euros per share, which is up just over 20% from current market prices. Now, on the slightly more aggressive as well as potentially speculative end on the spectrum, we have Southwestern Airlines. Now, let me reiterate, this is obviously a much more speculative and high risk play. And I've looked at a few different airlines and Southwest Airlines looks like one of the better companies positioned within this space. And the reason why I say this is that they're not absolutely up to their eyeballs in debt 
like companies like American Airlines. Now, I think it's pretty obvious that international travel will inevitably resume at some point in the future, but there is still certainly questions to be answered on whether the size and the scale of the airline industry will be as big as it was pre-pandemic. So with that in mind, pre-pandemic profitability, as well as the state of the company's current financials, are the key things in which I personally look for in an airline stock right now. So with financial liquidity being one of the major pinpoints for airline stocks, let's do a direct comparison between Southwestern Airlines and American Airlines. So Southwestern Airlines total cash position is at 13.3 billion versus American Airlines just half of that of 6.8 billion. Total debt sits at 12.2 billion for Southwestern versus American Airlines, which is three times that at 41 billion. Current ratio of Southwestern Airlines sits at 2.02 which is actually very strong versus that of American Airlines which is just 0.67. So from a financial stability point of view Southwestern Airlines are certainly in the much more stable position of the two companies. Now Southwestern Airlines stock price is actually up 142% from market lows and is trading pretty close to pre-pandemic highs and has certainly seen a lot of investor optimism over the course of most recent months. Not only that but this optimism is also supported by Yahoo Finance finance analysts who have a price forecast of $58 for the stock which is roughly about 3% higher than that of the current market price. So that is very much a bit of a mixed bag of stocks in which we've discussed and here's how I've plotted them on a kind of risk versus reward spectrum. So with that said guys be sure to let me know down in the comment section which stocks you guys would like me to look into. As well if you did enjoy the video guys be sure to drop a like on it, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and with that being said I'll see you over in the next video.